Okay, this week I got a melee build that um, specializes in taking on more tankier, or rather higher stability opponents. Um, so that's how we're going to make use of the vertical missiles in this video, by the way. <clears throat> As they are great extenders to your um, impact threshold that you do on your initial opening. We really want to try to stagger them before I have to switch to my second melee weapon. So we're going to time the vertical missiles to hopefully do some work. This is a beefy, beefy build. <clears throat> I probably would have to soften that up even still, but uh, I'm going to try doing the charged laser slicer and then go into the pulse blade after that. On my set, on my second and third melee, by the way. So I need a favorable trade here. Okay, that combo is just enough to get the job done, it seems. He can't uh, impact break this time. All right, pulled it off. That was a, uh, what a slugfest against a melee uh, build like that thing. <clears throat> yeah, so using the laser slicers uh, charged attack into mini stun is really nice for the mitigation when they lose their stagger and they try to counter punish. We got a good chance of making the trade still in our favor. Oh, just out of energy. How did that not give me any impact? Okay, well, he's got no more bailouts now, so that's good. Even a tank is kind of afraid of this build, as you can see. What the? Oh my lord, what a fight. But yeah, this melee can handle it. Hey everybody, welcome back again for another build video um, where we're going to take on a challenge of using something that the community currently thinks is trash and find a way to make it useful into a build that's uh, at least viable. Uh, so this week it is the vertical missiles. Um, I'm using the O4s here. You can swap out the legs for uh, these guys here I'd recommend. Uh, let's just find them, these guys here. And then you can go with the middle missiles. The firing sequence is a little long, though, uh, if you're going to use these ones. So in melee combat, where you're often trying to, uh, like, you have to make quick decisions, uh, that can be a bit of a hamper. But uh, the light ones still offer a significant boost to what we're going to use them for. And so that brings us into the topic of how have I been using vertical missiles. So there's a couple different things you can do. Uh, they're basically meant to uh, act as force multipliers for other actions. So, for example, if you're going in for a kick, um, you can... Uh, sorry for the message there. I just played this guy while testing this. Uh, if you're going in for a kick and you pre-fire the missiles before you do the kick, uh, they will land while the opponent is stunned from the kick, and then that will add uh, a significant amount of damage, but more importantly, impact and cumulative impact. So, for example, the lowest missiles here, uh, they do uh, 350 56 impact added on uh, and then in terms of the accumulative impact there you're going to get 220. Uh, you can double it if you can fit these uh, missiles onto your build which I definitely do a lot sometimes depending on how tanky they are um, but uh, these ones are good enough for most builds it's only when I'm really against more heavier mechs that I would typically run the heavier version of this build. So A you can multiply kicks with it 
B, you can enhance your stagger punishes with it as long as you fire them before any firing stance or melee combo stance is needed. So um, a lot of times you're going to find that these have to be used on prediction, or I would use them at the same time that I use the shotgun. Uh, a couple of exceptions, but that's kind of how you think about them, is you always pull the R1 and R2 at the same time, and that is 90% of the combos on this build. The other thing about this build, uh, it is named... Um, the or sorry it is themed around having a double punish and so it's called the uh, penultimate wound basically penultimate meaning the just before last uh wound and that's because this thing can chain melee combos uh to to basically kill some of the most powerful mechs it can do over twenty thousand damage uh with one of its combos uh most of it energy but some of it kinetic with the shotgun and missiles so uh yeah talking a bit about the pieces here zimmerman is going to be very in, instrumental in our combo uh pulse plate and laser sword or laser slicer have very interesting synergies due to their coolings so the pulse blade uh if you initiate with it and switch to the punish with the laser slicer even if they interrupt with uh, their expansion you can switch back to the pulse blade and it'll be off cooldown and then you can go into another punish with it which is really interesting so um the standard combo for this build the most most reliable one and the one that you typically use especially against lighter mechs because you don't need that crazy amount of damage of the max combo is to uh, pre-fire the vertical missiles while you're charging in or melee thrusting in uh, or just before you melee thrust in I should say uh, and you're going to do the charged pulse blade attack uh, to get the mini stun, which will hold them in place for the vertical missiles while you also shoot the shotgun and there's a very nice mechanic with this which is that the initial impact will not decay away for all three of these impacts. So you're going to get the full impact uh, threshold met here, and the vertical missiles really help push it over the edge to stun some of the more tankier mechs in the game. Like You can actually even stun some t uh, very heavy uh, tetras with this. So looking at the impact, we've got 1,200 here for the charged impact. Uh, the Zimmerman is going to add 620, so we're already up to 1820. That's a lot of different mechs. But uh, the vertical missiles are kind of the clutch here, where we're going to get another uh, 89 times 4 missiles, which is going to push us at 2,176. So that's a lot of Tetras. You can further expand this if you go for this one here. Uh, again, you're going to have to swap the legs, but that'll put you at 2,500 impact on the initial combo. Now, that is presuming that you land the or you fire the missiles perfectly and go in with the pulse blade and time it so that and they don't dodge the melee or the charge attack. But uh, yeah, a lot of Tetras are very brazen because they have so much impact. They're just looking to trade. So uh, yeah, crazy amount of impact threshold being met on that initial burst here. If you pepper them with like a shotgun blast before going in for that, then all the more you can, uh, you're going to basically guarantee a stagger against almost anything. Okay, uh, so let's talk about the rest of the pieces now. Um, we're actually running assault armor on this build 90% of the time. The only time I switch to pulse armor is if I'm playing against somebody with terminal armor. But uh, assault armor is the go-to because it allows us to chain combos when people try to bail out with their extension or their expansion and that's what this build centers around like most melee builds we're going to run the sand tie just because of the high capacity and the quick en recharge delay um, there is a argument for going with the coral generator so that if you're running low on battery you can just go straight up and then uh or rather if you're fighting vertical enemies you can still get your energy back without returning to the ground even though you lose some height um, but we are trying to keep our speed above that at uh, that 315 mark here um, and this generator is uh, hard to give up despite its weight um, because the boost speed on the Kakaku is extremely slow or sorry the thrust speed so this definitely is in need of a buff I'd say it needs to be at least 6200 it should be it sh as a CQC booster it shouldn't be immediately giving up the space advantage it gains while doing the first melee thrust it's just not worth the exchange most of the time um, and you burn way too much energy as well uh, trying to melee thrust all the time to keep the uh, distance but we do need this because of the laser slicers melee thrust being so slow um, so if we want to be able to reliably chain this uh, then we we're going to keep this booster and that is kind of something that uh, the laser slicer has over the pile bunker is it has a better melee thrust it trades off some damage but you uh, a get a melee thrust so if there's some spacing issues it's no problem and secondly because of its long animation that's kind of what allows us to chain the pulse uh, blade and get it off cooldown so that we can actually do a triple melee combo what we're going to do is pulse blade in 
switch weapons while shooting the shotgun and vertical missiles, go into the laser slicer, we'll get as much damage as we can out of it. If they if they tend to pop their armor really quickly, no problem. We counter pop with assault armor. That allows us to switch back to the pulse blade and do a double slash, uh, which we can then at that point do another shotgun. And uh, the laser slicer should be coming off cooldown pretty quickly. They'll be able to move, but we'll be able to chase them down with a charged attack. Try to get another mini stun in there. <clears throat> but it's extremely uh intense uh, in terms of a melee combo the weight threshold here is like just in the nick of uh of what we're able to fit i literally can't even add uh the other missiles here just going up by about a thousand and seven hundred so you can see there's not a lot of wiggle room in this with these legs but i really want these legs because it's the only really good jump distance that allows or in bipeds that allows for dodging attacks reliably i feel like the rest of them just don't move enough to dodge some of the more important attacks granted you have to be grounded but uh yeah the knock legs are just in a tier above their own unless you want to go reverse joints with this which this build definitely can do i just feel like with the amount of time we spend in close quarters uh sometimes the kicks on those tend to go past your opponent really easy because of the distance that they travel Basho Arms is self-explanatory, and Asilius is self-explanatory, I feel like. The Formeza Core, I've been alternating between these two. Uh, either take more stability uh, and better generator output versus um, the better uh, supply adjustment here, reducing that EN recharge delay, but trading off some stability, gaining some AP points, and uh, the uh, energy resistance goes up. So these two are very close. Uh, I feel like the weight is the significant difference, but it doesn't really make too much of a difference on this build. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I've uh, been alternating between these two. The knock head, I wouldn't mind swapping out for uh, the Kaswar, I guess that's how you pronounce it. I haven't really uh, decided whether or not to yet or not, but um, this helm has much better scanning, which I like. However, this one has a better uh, weight situation. So uh, yeah, that's kind of how that works. So that's the breakdown of the pieces. Uh, let's talk about the combos now. Okay, so uh, we're gonna show the standard combo, which is the one that you'll use most of the time. You're going to pre-fire the missiles, go in for the melee thrust, those should land at the same time, allowing us to uh, do uh, the uh, laser slicer. And you can see the pulse plate is also ready to follow up there. They will be able to move, but they will still take bonus damage on those pulse blade swings, by the way. So uh, very important to note there. If I were to swap out this uh, missile for the heavier version, which I guess I'll just do really quickly right now, showing you the, uh, um, the beefier version of this build. You can actually insta stagger the uh, tetra on uh, the missiles uh, just after the pulse plated missiles so i'll just show that here yeah so if it had more health which tanks would uh you can see the combo is pretty intense talking about how to chain in combos here so most people will interrupt the laser slicer part way through in which case you need to pop your assault armor switch to the pulse blade and just resume the combo from there there is another combo that's slightly more powerful which is when you get a shotgun stagger break so i'll show that really quick here i'm just gonna build up the stagger this is more for like really tanky enemies uh if you can get their impact to be within a uh a shotgun blast away okay so that should be it here. We're gonna shoot shotgun and missiles at the same time. Go in for the pulse blade. They're gonna pop armor. We'll switch. Go in for the, la the laser slicer. We get the whole guaranteed combo now. S uh, switch back and do the pulse blade there. So that is the uh, 20,000 damage combo, by the way. And oh, a little bit over. And uh, yeah, that you can basically use to delete some of the most uh, tanky bosses. You won't be able to outright kill the most powerful versions. I have debated swapping for the Coral Generator to eke out a little bit more damage in the Assault Armor because then it becomes true damage, but uh, bypassing resistances. But uh, yeah, I, I honestly, I haven't really felt like I needed it, so I uh, haven't really uh, bothered to go in that way. This build will naturally struggle against Kiters just because of the terrible thrust and AB thrust on the Kakakus. You can swap out the booster for the Brazil for Kiters specifically, um, which I have done. So that is, at least until they adjust the boosters to have all above 9,000 thrust and AB. Uh, I feel like the range should actually be more tight than it is currently. Like the Brazil shouldn't have such an advantage in thrust. It should be closer. So like I think the Kakaku should probably fall around 
uh, like 93, 94, should be in the middle in terms of AB thrust and then in the middle in terms of a regular thrust and then using the melee thrust to make up the difference. Okay, so yeah, that is the combos here. To demonstrate something else with the laser slicer, which is using the charged attack to A, get a mini stun, uh, get a little bit of free accumulative impact. It's not great as a laser weapon, but uh, more importantly, it can be used to mitigate incoming impact buildup and damage and more importantly block kicks so you don't get staggered basically you get a trade i think it needs a little bit of a buff truth be told but uh it is still really powerful if you can predict that your opponent's very kick aggressive and is about to go in with that so let's take a look at that yeah block the kick switch weapons and uh yeah it basically creates a mini stunning trade that uh allows you to immediately go into one of your combos i use the double slash because he popped armor if he hadn't used assault or his expansion there i would have just went for the charged pulse plate to get another mini stun and um then potentially a kick which should be enough to stagger and uh then i'd be popping my armor and switching back weapons again using the synergy of the cooling of these two weapons very efficiently all right looks like two that's a lot of missiles and uh Booster looks like the Kakaku. That's good. At least he's playing CQC. The grenade, unfortunately, is... Or the bazooka is going to be tricky with this build because of the uh, lack of the legs that I normally use. <clears throat> Hopefully my stability uh, lift, though, from the, these legs will uh, allow me to trade more favorably. But that oscillator is pretty quick. Pulse armor drop is tricky. Okay, so the stability did uh, come in clutch there. I don't think I was timing my missiles very well. That is something I'm going to have to be more cognizant of because I can't quite stagger him without these. Yeah, missed the missiles again. I don't know how that didn't land, but alright. Gonna give him a, another shot. Looks like he's going for another uh, big punish with the bazooka. Shame I don't have a shield here. We'll have to pick our moment carefully to uh, go in, though. I think I need to dodge the bazooka to win this. So we don't want to start melee thrusting in while he's priming the shot, that's for sure. pick our thrust with the pulse plate very carefully. I wonder if I should be melee cancelling and then doing the missiles. I feel like he's going to shoot the bazooka though, and then it'll have to interrupt the combo.
to um, demonstrate going against some more tankier uh, builds here to show off, because melees often struggle against those types of builds, because if you can't stagger prior to your main punish weapon, your combo basically fails. So that's kind of what the vertical missiles really excel at, is if your opening combo has a mini stun in it, then you can stack on vertical missiles. Uh, looks like he's dropped down in weight. He's still kind of tanky, so... I don't think that that could survive a pulse blade, though, so... We'll see. He was running a tankier build against another opponent just last round. Maybe he's trying to counter pick me or something. Go. Okay. I don't know how that didn't actually land. That was interesting. Oh, I got stuck. That sucks. What the? How did that not stun him? Well. Didn't really get to use the vertical missiles there. That was a very strange uh, Hail Mary match, but uh, whatever. Shotgun or stagger extend with the shotgun and get the pulse blade guaranteed finish too. <clears throat> It was kind of beefy. Uh, not enough to survive the pulse blade with even just a couple of missiles to shotgun, though. 